I hope that you have nothing against recording. And uh, we are here to start with the IDR workshop. My name is Peter. And on the top next to me is my colleague Jean-Marie Burel, who actually will uh, uh, lead the second part of the workshop, which is uh, um, which will be the bigger one. And uh, let me just start with sharing my screen and a short presentation, which we will share with Jean-Marie. Okay. Thank you for your patience. And um, so let's uh, concentrate in this workshop on the IDR, which is the image data resource. Uh, it was discussed, of course, in the discussion session right now, as well as there is a talk uh, of uh, our colleague Francis Wong, the curator of IDR, who is of course present on this uh, workshop as well, which I hope that you were able to see. Um, uh, which will tell you um, on a higher level what IDR is. And this workshop is basically to uh, persuade you to, so to say, get your hands dirty on, uh, uh, on IDR to uh, see, don't, don't panic, this slide is uh, there for, for a reason, we are not finishing yet. Uh, to understand really with the hands-on how useful IDR can be. Okay, so that you don't stay on the theoretical level. And the first part, uh, this is just a slide uh, which usually comes at the at the at the end. But because we are sharing the presentation, we are putting it here. These are of course our funders, as you know from the other talks, which we are thankful to. And uh, in the first part of this workshop, we will uh, do the. IDR exploration in the hands-on using the user interface. Uh, then uh, this will be done with myself and then Jean-Marie will take over for the analysis and IDR. Then we'll go into the breakout rooms. Uh, you have a big say on what in the breakout rooms will be, but the um, general split up is kind of clear because you will need probably somebody from the OME team in that breakout room. Um, so um, one breakout room definitely will be uh, will be led by Francis, uh, where the submission will be um, go, gone through and other topics of similar nature. Um, and of course, analysis in depth is an is an other obvious breakout room. So that's just a suggestion. We will go uh, now into the. Uh, in my presentation first uh, in an overview of what will be done in the um, user interface of uh, the IDR itself as a workshop with yourself. Uh, first, we will search for studies by term and I will um, familiarize you with uh, the first portal page, uh, which uh, confronts you when you come to the IDR um, URL. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will explore for uh, what studies can you search pardon me, for what terms, by what terms can you study, uh, search for studies? Well, study being in IDR a unit of submission. So if an author of a um, scientific paper uh, decides to submit uh, his or her data to IDR, then uh, they uh, contact the IDR team and uh, the submission process is being initiated. And uh, the submission results are almost certainly in one unit of submission, which we call study. So that study is then co connected to that scientific paper publication, which might be already published or in manuscript, the details later in the breakout room. So uh, we will go there and see how can we search the studies uh, by the terms. Then we will go into the depth of one single study and uh, see what everything uh, particularly can, uh, can we find in the uh, user interface of uh, practically Omero Web, of course, because IDR is based on Omero and mainly on Omero Web. Um, how we can view the images, how we can explore the metadata in a right hand pane, and what will that bring us and a connection to other databases as well. And then we will uh, search inside that user interface for images, 
by term, again, these will be the same collection of terms as in the entrance portal and compare the results from different studies. Um, meaning this is a cross study search. So you are searching as, uh, across uh, entities which were originally, of course, having nothing to do with each other and were submitted by very different authors of very different papers, uh, possibly on very different organisms as well. Uh, but that is showing the power of IDR as well. And Jean-Marie then will uh, pick up with the um, Jupyter notebooks and the analysis environments for which there was a question this morning already uh, after a short break uh, and tell you uh, and mainly show you uh, um, or lead you into uh, running that, them yourself. That, that's not a promise. Maybe you will not manage with the shortness of time, but definitely you can do those things yourself and you can run those analysis, which Amari will be showing you on the topics I just highlighted, which will be shown in a second in the user interface, namely search for metadata, cross study searches for metadata, and or if time permits uh, the uh, uh, segmentation or uh, fetching and segmentation of the row image data. Okay, so that is already Jean-Marie's uh, part of the presentation. I will stop there and uh, with your permission, uh, we will switch to the, uh, the hands-on part of the first uh, part uh, of, the, uh, of the workshop. And I would ask you if you could please go to the idr.openmicroscopy.org. I'm sure some of my colleagues will be able to pop this uh, URL into the chat. Um, so if you if you go there, you should be seeing something something like this, okay? Like this, pardon me. Yes. Um, pardon me, that was that was a remnant of my prep. Uh, I was bothering you with, so uh, you should see a page which says welcome to IDR, etc, etc. Um, now, uh, this is something uh, like a portal page which is in front of the of the Omero web user interface of IDR. And it's of course uh, designed to give you a hand with a particular target search with which you are approaching IDR. Uh, you are probably not approaching IDR just like you wouldn't approach an encyclopedia with the intention to read it from top to bottom. You want to you want to find something straight uh, straight on, and you know what that something is. So uh, you can see that you can look for all those terms in this portal page. By the way, technically this is called Omero Gallery, and um, and it's uh, it's an application for Omero Web. The um, search is then based on the metadata, of course, which are uh, submitted uh, with the uh, uh, studies, with the images. And of course, nothing of that, which you see here, would be possible without those curation steps, which were uh, crucial for getting the images and the metadata in a reasonable manner, meaning in a reasonably connected manner to the uh, image data resource, which is then led uh, by Frances Wong and is then explored in her breakout room later on. So let's say that I have the idea to look for gene and let's say that I have uh, the gene name, which is TCF15, okay? So that's how I can, how I can start. If I, you saw the short uh, spinner here and it has an autocomplete function. It suggests two versions of the TCF15 uh, spelling, but uh, I uh, know that the, you know, because of the uh, work of the curators of the idea again, uh, it will not matter which one I select. And uh, I select, let's say the row one, and um, it comes up with some studies and uh, sample images from them, okay? So I know that some studies uh, indeed uh, were dealing with DCF15. Uh, they come from differing organisms and they are differing image numbers which are associated with this particular gene. Um, I am selecting the IDR0062 simply because that's what I'm interested in. 
and I click on the more on the bottom right. I hope that you are catching up with me. Uh, this is hopefully not too fast. So if I click on more, I will leave this portal page and I will land in something which you possibly know, or if you didn't, then maybe you were in the basic uh, uh, Omero workshop, which is obviously the interface of Omero web. But uh, it's a little bit different. It's, it's a customized version of the Omero web where I have some search terms uh, on the top bar here. And you can see that I have landed also in a, a left-hand pine environment, which is slightly unfamiliar, which says gene on the top. And uh, it's expanded and I have found two images out of the study, which has a code name IDR0062. It's a nuclear segmentation uh, um, study. And uh, I uh, would like to, um, let's say, select this image. And yes, I can verify in the under the attributes in the right hand pane, okay, there is um, there is a gene and it says obviously gene symbols TCF15. Now I can uh, go and in, I mean, I hope that you managed to find the right in pain, the attributes expanded because that's where the, the most interesting metadata are. And I can click on the icon next to the link uh, next to the gene identifier. So the icon means always that it's an external link and it will bring me to some external database. In this case, it will be an ensemble where there is the description of that gene. So this is again, the level of curation, which of course the curators put into, the, into this uh, data set. And uh, now you might think, okay, so uh, that's nice. Uh, does this study have only two images? The answer is no. The reason I'm seeing two images is that these two images are associated with TCF15, the others are not. But there are more images, very probably there are more images to this study. So if I select the top container, which we call project, but in IDR it's called rather experiment, okay? So this is a, what you can, what you know from Omero as a project dataset image uh, structure. Uh, but in IDR, these uh, projects are called rather experiments. And I can click on the link on the top right, copy it, paste it in the new browser window, such as, uh, such as here. Okay, and I will be navigated to a to the whole study. So not only the images which were associated with TCF15. And I can now see that uh, I have a project here and uh, the images which I just studied were, were right here. I was selecting this image. The project uh, actually has um, two parts uh, and uh, or several studies. You can see some of those images uh, will be then used by Jean-Marie in the uh, segmentation workflow later if we come to it. Um, and let's just have a look at the top project here and again we'll go to the right hand pane so this is basically the study uh, and we said uh, that the studies in idr are connected with the publication of course the um, whereabouts and the metadata of the publication itself are uh, highlighted here so the publication title as well as the uh, so-called doi of the publication which is right here under attributes it says publication doi okay if i click on that link in a new tab will open the it will open the publication in plus biology and uh, i will just start looking for data um, data availability section. Okay, so this is how I how I did it. I just search inside the publication for the data availability section. So obviously once more to be not so short on the publication, this is a publication which deals with the automated detection of nuclei. And it's basically uh, uh, validating new methods for segmentations of nuclei. Okay, so that's what the publication is about. 
and um, uh, data availability section has a link to the IDR. Okay, so this is something which is which is really worth uh, dwelling on a little bit because it's uh, it's very strong reason for for the IDR's existence, and this is namely that you see that this uh, resource, the image data resource, is being used by the publisher as so to say a quality control on several levels. Uh, if we have manuscript, then uh, in the IDR, by the submission of the data in the IDR, the publisher has the assurance that the underlying data, of course, are uh, what they are and uh, can link to them in the publication itself. Um, <clears throat> so if I if I now go um, if I now read this section. Um, Okay, then I can simply click on the IDR and find the find the find the study. So in this way, in this way, I have achieved. Um, yes. So in this way, I have achieved the uh, round trip, and basically, I am I have a link from the publication to the to the IDR and from the IDR to the publication, as you just saw. Okay, so that's quite common actually for the IDR studies. Uh, I think there are almost no exception to this rule. And it's of course fulfilling the main mission of the IDR, which is the fairness of the data. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let me draw your attention to the image which I was studying before. And let's have a look at the other attributes of the single images under the this study. So, for example, I have here um, genotype, etc. We will study that later in detail. Uh, as well as I have under the uh, as an attachment to this image, I have a TIFF file. Okay. So uh, this TIFF file contains regions of interest, uh, which were then um, uh, transformed into Omero regions of interest and added uh, to the same image like so. So you, for example, can already here glean, glean that the regions of interest count on that image is 154. So Omero registers uh, these regions of interest uh, in this counter here. They are ultimately coming from this TIFF, but uh, via the step of, uh, again, the curators uh, running a script on them and putting the, uh, the uh, data from TIFF as masks on top of the image itself as as the mask uh, regions of interest inside Omero. And you can download that TIFF as an original data by one click as I do so, save file. That would take too long. So I downloaded it already. And I have here, I have it have the TIFF here open already like so. Okay, so imagine that's the one I just downloaded. It, the download is still in process, pardon me. Um, the download is still in process and um, uh, it, it is a basically um, an overlay image, an overlay TIFF, uh, which contains those regions of interest. So how does it look in when I open it, open this image in Omero? I can then go and double click on that thumbnail and the uh, image will open in the full viewer of Omero uh, called Omero iViewer. Okay, so inside the IDR, I can, for example, double click on the same thumbnail and then play with the iViewer, uh, um, iViewer uh, capabilities, let's say, of showing the channels uh, separately here. So I just show the blue channel and I show the uh, yellow channel in the other viewport. Uh, as you might know from the iViewer, uh, this is because I know that I want to show you the regions of interest and the yellow channel slightly interferes with that. So on the regions of interest tab, I have the 154 ROIs. If I click on that, you can see what is happening in the uh, viewport with the blue channel. Uh, the, um, um, the image has 
pardon me, that was not very clever. Uh, the image has been uh, populated by the mask region of interest, uh, which are highlighted here. So for example, if I click on one of them, you can see this is the one I just selected. This is one region of interest. I can uh, show and hide all of them or show and hide one of them, etc., etc., as I see fit, okay? So now I am in the plane 26 of this uh, image. So you can see they are all uh, stored in um, Homero. And here I get... <sighs> Here I get to the comparison. So this is basically so that you trust me, the downloaded TIFF, that's the original data which were transformed into those regions of interest in Omero. You can see where my mouse is jumping. This image is now local because I downloaded it. I couldn't see it in Omero, but this of course I can see inside Omero. This is not local, this is on the IDR server itself, okay? So this is how we handle metadata. This is the level of uh, curation and care we put into that. And uh, let's now uh, switch to another walkthrough uh, slightly. Uh, we will during that uh, uh, introduce other type of the layout of uh, studies, which is possible in IDR. I just said and showed that one of those types is called experiments and is in the project uh, data set. But if we go to, let's say, IDR 33, you can see that these, um, uh, th this uh, layout is alternating. The gray blue boxes are the experiment type of layouts, whereas the uh, the uh, the gray or gray brown boxes are the experiment the pardon me the screen type of uh, layout so this is the screenplay well high throughput screening and we will actually deal rather with those types during the course of the uh, workshop uh, as presented further by Jean Marie inside that analysis. Um, Okay, so let us let us now being inside this uh, user interface uh, have another question, and this would be, uh, what if I look for a compound? Okay, so we were searching already in the portal page for genes, and uh, this brought us to something meaningful. Then, if we select the compounds on the top uh, bar, which I still can do, so I don't lose the searching capabilities once dived in into the IDR. I can navigate to it with many, by many uh, ways, and I start typing Loratadin. Okay, again, this is auto complete, auto complete here on the top left, and I select, let's say, one loratadine. You can say I have three suggestions of three spelling types of loratadine, but again, the curators made sure that I am not going to be uh, paying high price for selecting, subselecting just. Uh, uh, just um, images which are associated with only one spelling uh, variant. Instead, I will get all three, as you see just very quickly right now here. Okay, so if I go here and click on the very first uh, uh, screen, that's what we call screen, okay, which contains plates. And again, the subset of this plate, some wells of this plate, I'm being shown which one are those. Well, obviously the ones which are associated with loratadine. So I select the first uh, well and first image in that well, the image ID, etc., cetera, the, uh, are shown, but again, in IDR much more important are the attributes. And I can now go and find the compound. Compound name is obviously loratadine. I click on the icon, which will bring me to the outer world, to PubChem. And I can see that in the PubChem and read for uh, further particularities about loratadine. So this is the linkage to another database. Um, we also have the uh, compound supplementary because in the wor world of chemical compounds, you get the different uh, uh, notations about how to uh, how to encode a particular compound. So we have the inchy key, smileys, etc. But uh, yeah, we also have a comp compound mechanism of action. Okay, so uh, this is this is nice. 
we have also uh, nevertheless another study here. So this is a completely different study and we can now compare uh, the, uh, the layout of metadata here. Again, the compound is loratadine and I would probably land with, in the same, uh, in the same uh, uh, PubChem item. And nevertheless, uh, I can now compare, let's say those two images by going back and forth uh, just as I did. And uh, you have already a feel how the loratadine was used and see the images, let's say in full viewer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I can now also go and see another. So this is a cross study, the cross study search. And Jean-Marie will go into that in, in his notebook, showing you some uh, steps on top of that. What, uh, you know, uh, you, you have a very nice overview here and you can use the user interface, but uh, you don't get the global overview because of obvious, uh, obvious uh, real estate problems. You just can't fit all of that on one screen. So you have to click around and compare. Um, the other, compound we would look for is let's say remdesivir okay that's features also strongly this is in one uh, in one study and the remdesivir here is again um, to be found in the attributes under compound again if i click on that then the remdesivir is coming but uh, very importantly for the remdesivir in the study 0094 about SARS-CoV-2 um, is under others also uh, metadata submitted by authors which are actually analytical results, okay, such as the percentage inhibition DPC and Jean-Marie will go into that in his notebooks in depth, especially on this study. Okay, so I hope that you understood by now why, what is the purpose and what is the um, a usage of IDR if I have only, let's say only in uh, inverted commas, uh, the user interface uh, for in my hands. And uh, now Jean-Marie can overtake and show you how can I build up on this power by using uh, Jupyter Notebooks and uh, programming languages and uh, queries uh, which will target multiple things and get multiple results on them. Thank you very much. People may have a question. Sharing. Yeah, but question before. If of people, course, uh, yes. Pardon me. Want something to, to review again or to show again? Okay, so if there are no questions. You can, of course, come back to it at any at any moment. Um, we will leave questions also at the end. Uh, so I will stop sharing and uh, pass the screen to Jean and and word to Jean Marie. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. So the floor is yours. Jim, you're muted. Okay, can you see the screen? Sorry, yeah, because the zoom. So, as Peter, thanks. Uh, Maybe can you maximize your your browser because we see also a lot of your desktop. Oh, you see my desktop. Okay, it was supposed to only share that screen. That's fine. Hopefully, that would be better. Okay, so as Peter indicated, it's like IDR is built on top of Omero, so you can access. Uh, um, using the multiple APIs. So here today, we're going to look at what you can do with R and uh, Python, but there are other tools that you can connect to IDR. And if you're interested to see how this can, can be done, um, we can, I can show you that um, afterwards. So as Peter indicated, we, 
we started to to look at some idea study but what we were interested in was one of the what the code name is idr 94 and in what um, that peter indicated and here in the paper what we have is we have some graph which is great and then they explain what uh, the ic50 or one of the parameter is calculated and you have the images but what we want to say is can can we with all the result that's been submitted to you and all the metadata in idr can we actually redo the, this type of figure and actually validate that all the result match what we see on the graph that nothing has been kind of modified so in order to do that um, idr is highly curated as uh, pete Peter has indicated, so there's a large amount of data that is um, um, given to us. So what we will, and obviously we, we cannot build all the time a UI specific for it. Will has shown a Parade and Parade V2 to, in, in, to investigate uh, certain things, but you cannot explore everything. So here we have, this is the type of data you have. You see you are almost 10,000 row of data with a lot of entry the well number, the the compound name, etc., some value. So what we want to do now is give a meaning to that because that's in that type of information we can find the the graph, the possible graph. And very interesting here we link everything. So you have a link to the image and also a link to some compound name. That's kind of what's the the bulk of it is. So we will look into that before we go in, into more detail. So before we start going into more detail, let's see what we have. So we have a collection of notebooks. So I should say from the start that is not, we're not creating an environment where you're going to reanalyze the entire data. You can only have a, a sense of what's there. It's a, I will say a teaser in the sense, so you can check notebook, check some script, but you're not going to reanalyze a full paper with terabyte of data. This is uh, not the, the, the purpose here. So associated to, uh, to the IDR, we have also put a page called the ITR, which is a collection of tool. And if you look at the I in IDR website, idr.microscopy, you see that there's an about page called ITR and you have some tools and associated to in that table, you will see a little, and that's mean there's a little notebook associated to a given tool, in that case, cell profiler, you can run the notebook and you run against some um, some IDR data. So if you're interested in that, I can, I can show you that afterwards. So, what do we use in order to, re to create that environment for for evaluation? I would say more than complete uh, when to reuse of data, as Jason in indicated, more than reproducing. We we use Binder Hub. So Binder Hub is a uh, it's uh, in the Jupyter Hub ecosystem. So you can you create you have a repository and you convert your repository into a Docker container. And the advantage in that Docker container, you have all the dependency you will need. The same can be done in Colab. So Colab is a Google, um, Google product. So you have, again, an environment where you can run some notebook and uh, redo some, um, some analysis in that. And you will see in many of these repositories, so in, in a lot of our, our repository that we have, uh, we have, um, this kind of environment that you can convert into a, either Binder Hub or using Colab, you will see this type of icon launch in Binder, open in Colab, and you will you will uh, be able to run this notebook into an environment. That's mean that you do not have to to do uh, to install anything on your machine. You can run this environment in your web browser and explore some IDR data. As I said, you are not going to reanalyze terabyte of data. Just that need to be clear from the start. So if you want to know more, we have plenty of this example. You can browse the presentation and you will see and having the ability to run Java, Python, R, and all those links in the presentation are active. So when you link, click on it, something will happen in your browser. It can take some time if the Docker image not, is not built, but it will, it will show, show up with, a, with a, an environment with all your dependency um, are installed. 
So today, we're, as I was indicating, we're going to look at the SARS-CoV-2 data set that Peter was just starting to show you briefly. And we'll do also a cross-study investigation because this is also the purpose of IDR. Data are highly curated within their own context, but the curation is done across study, which is quite interesting from um, an investigation perspective is you can start looking at other study and find completely unrelated data that the one like in the case of the SARS-CoV-2 will go to completely unrelated data when you look at compound. So after that workshop, as uh, Sebastian indicated this morning, we'll go into some uh, breakout. So let's go back to our example. So that's what I was indicating that we look today, this look at this paper, starting from the, the, web, the web client, we were able to look at this, um, at this table and we are going to explore the table from an API perspective, because like this, how can you, how can I see if the, um, how can I recalculate and reproduce that figure? You could always download the full table as a CSV file. That's an option and do it in Excel. If you're an Excel guru, I'm not. So that's, uh, and that's not the, the purpose of potentially if you want to show something to sh someone. And what we try to encourage um, as indicating this morning during the round table discussion is ideally we would like somebody submitting a paper which has, um, also some analytical code, submitting to us this analytical code, and then we could along, we could immediately link it to the data. And in the case of that study, the SARS-CoV-2, that's kind of what happened um, partially. The author were able to guide us of what type of uh, packages they were wanted to use. So this is, I don't want to be too technical here, but associated to the, the screening, uh, how to, to get the data organized, they were submitting us some, some little script that, uh, sorry, not, not this one, some uh, little R script that we have converted into apps. So then that was facilitating the exploration of the data. So the author, we have worked closely with the author, so they didn't not only submitted the data, and but they also submitted some, um, Analytic uh, well, exploration or analytical pipeline that we could then reuse. We have packaged it up into a repository that then can be turned into a Docker container. So that, that's kind of a, I would say, the aim of also now IDI is not don't not only give me the data but also tell me how I can explore or show me how you did it on uh, so I can revalidate on the on a small sample. So when you are um, associated to um, to the data, when we have this type of notebook, we have we can start linking those elements. So then then the user know there is a way to explore the data, and you can click on the link, and it will create an environment where you will have all the dependency and all the elements you need to to work on. So let's look at uh, what we have done. Oops. So hopefully that's not timed out for me. Okay, yes, timed out. Okay, so I will have to relaunch. Uh, no luck. Uh, I, I need to relaunch because it yeah, timed out when I've been probably speaking too long. But you, when you see on this GitHub repository, I was clicking on a, on an icon, so that should restart the server. That should take a couple of seconds. The first time it can take. Um, significant amount of time because you will have, depending on the number of dependency you will install. So, okay, we're back back on track. Okay. Uh, okay, this is not what I want it to be. Open. Okay. So before we look at the notebook, I would like you to, so you can, have environment here. We've created an environment with main dependency, but for use familiar with uh, R. What we want, first want to look at is exploring um, this big table in a, in a shiny app. So if I go, when you launch it directly, it will not go to that step. That you, if you, you, you want to, I just want to show you how it happened. So if you click shiny, okay. In that case, I've got my apps and. Uh, should start the shiny app. It's going. We're going to calculate this IC50. That is basically the parameter. 
So here we load data from IDR, basically load this big table in our environment. That's now allowed us to dynamically check on every comp compound use. In the case of the paper, this, this plot is only for remdesivir. As you can see, there are 333 compounds that are used in the paper. So here, because of the, we had to get this, this uh, window quite wide to accommodate all the compound, it looks a bit flattened that the one compared the one we have in the paper, but you can start exploring already in a more meaningful manner and recalculate. IC50, as indicated here, is a, it's a way to measure how much substance was used to inhibit the uh, some cell in, in that case. So here we just calculate the and and already we can we can you you can you can see which compound seems to be useful or not useful. So you, you have the ability to explore yourself. It's it's easier, I would say, than just looking at this table. And you have very little to do. You have a, a library, pro, um, a package provided alongside the data, and is very tailored to your data. So because it's very difficult for us to build a generic tool that will solve everybody's problem. So if you're interested in the code, I can I can show you how this is done. But there's nothing. There's, if you're familiar with Shiny App, you probably could do better than 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 that. But it's it's just a, a quick way of exploring the data. Let's now look at the, what we have here. So as I indicated, everything in done in the, in the, you can access this environment in the browser. Here, I will have a lot of package uh, installed already for me, and I, I've got way of accessing this data. This is the notebook that you will see when you access from the, the web client. So I, I don't want to click it because that could take time again to load. Where am I here? So as I said, you have multiple way of exploring the data. You can use either the CSV, not too practical, this, this notebook to on or the, the Shiny app. This notebook <coughs> explore in one way. We use the, um, the web API to load the data. If you want to know more how to access via only R, it's also possible. There's a, a similar notebook only for R <coughs> that um, that you can then query the, the data only using the R binding to, to Omero. That takes that could take a bit of, of time due to the wrangling of object, but uh, it's they're both, uh, they're both doing the same thing. And here you you'll immediately see the screen ID so that dynamically we are able, when you have a multiple notebook, we can dynamically, if I click on the screen A, I will have a, at the same time another the similar notebook but i only need one notebook so we can dynamically pass parameter to notebook which is very convenient now for user they only need to we need to create one environment and then they are able to explore the all the data so you've got 10 20 of them this is dynamic and that's what we kind of try to encourage user to go in order to explore the the data so here not nothing very interesting uh, i'm just going to start running it so you can have a feel for what's happening. You load the library we need, nothing interesting. This is a few URL. So if people are interested to access the data from um, API, um, web API perspective, we can go through that in more detail. I said, and here I've, uh, JSON is a kind of a popular mechanism of uh, loading the data. So we load a uh, big JSON that give us some information here. Again, we just get numbers and string or value, but we don't get any data as, as such. You don't have any, any images, nothing at all here, but we can start to see exactly the same thing we could see in the table here. You know, you, you have those rows that are now low, oh, sorry, I should click on the wrong, loaded from a, uh, via the, the API. And now we can start doing something that we, something we can now manipulate. Here I'm, I'm going for convenience because it's, I'm just changing the column name, nothing exciting. And here we're going to look at remdesivir. That's one of the compound out of the 333, but we could filter by NC key as Peter uh, alluded, having those, param those key parameter 
is important uh, when we do cross uh, cross study investigation. So yeah, if, you, if you're interested in the technicality, you just do filtering of the table, uh, but that's not, uh, and here out of, so if I, if I wanted to download the full table, uh, you're talking about 10, around 10,000 row, but actually only for one compound, I'm only interested in 24 of those rows. And now we calculate this, the, the IC50 to try to reproduce the value in the paper. And we got a 0 0.8. And if you look at the, at the paper, at, um, it's indicating about 0 0.78 plus or minus a variation, which we are in the range because we didn't uh, use exactly the same library that was used in the paper, but already we can feel that, okay, the result be, with one method or the other are very, very similar because the 0 0.8, it was 0 0.78 plus or minus 0 0.2. So we are in the good range that the, the author indicate with using a different library. So we can start validating that the number, the curve given in the paper is, uh, is correct. So let's see now what, if we start plotting it and as, you, as we can see here, it's very, very similar to what the author were indicating in the paper. So, but in, interestingly now, because we have the, this is just by crunching those number associated, the metadata associated to the images, but can we validate that we can see a, a kind of a slow start, a big change and a kind of a plateau? And the power of having all the, the data, if I look at this table and you as a, as a scientist, you say, okay, great. But can I see that in, in my images? But because with IDR, everything is linked, all the metadata and the associated result are linked to the images. I can immediately validate that in the image. And again, I'm going to load via the, um, the API. The, in this table, as you can see here, you know, we have a well, a well ID. As, uh, so th that will correspond to one of those objects, a well ID here, which has multiple uh, images associated to it. So this is now what we are going to try to, to, to extract. We have this well ID associated to remdesivir data, and we want to extract this, that information. So this can take a bit, a bit of time, it was very quick. And you can see that with the, with the low concentration, you have very little cell. The more you increase the concentration, the more cell you have. So that's mean that the compound, you can validate that the compound start to keep cell alive. And you can actually see that at a given point, the more, if you put more compound, you don't have more cells. So you kind of the, you try to explain what's happening from a visual standpoint, what you have seen with the number, you have very slow start. My image are kind of black. I've got very little, a lot of cell have been killed. And then I start to increase the concentration, we increase the concentration, the image get grayer, so we have more cell alive. And then we kind of plateau, that's mean increasing the number, the concentration, doesn't give us more result. And we can actually validate that from a UI perspective and the number give us the, that we have more cell alive. So from an API perspective, you can actually start exploring the data that you, uh, you, you in, in an environment that from a, a, a person looking at the IDA data, if you don't, you you will not need necessarily to in, to uh, to regenerate that on your machine. I, you you can go there, explore the data, check another compound. You could nothing will stop you. We um, here to change. We have loritadine, for example. You could do exactly the same with a different compound. Regenerate, see the image, interact with the data, and yourself have nothing to install because this environment is created in in a container that can run. Uh, away from your computer. But if you are a data scientist and you want to do a lot of uh, investigation across multiple study or even in, investigate more studies, this is a, a good way of, you have all the elements you will need to start 
to create an environment and do it potentially at scale, not in the notebook environment, but you have all the dependency, you will need to put this dependency um, and create an environment probably locally or in a cluster where you can actually run those analysis at, at larger scale and fetch the data you need from IDR. Here, I'm just going to finish this notebook by calculating, which we couldn't do. Uh, we, you, but at the beginning, you can calculate by using some uh, R, R packages, all the IC50 for all the data. So you are also al you allowed user by exploring those data to calculate what they want. And, and importantly, they're able to download those files and do print them out them later for themselves. So even if it's done elsewhere, this, this, yeah, I'm running this um, this investigation somewhere in the in the cloud. I'm able to to retrieve some of those data and download them locally. So if I'm here, I'm here. I'm going to save all those output into a CSV file, and then if I go file, open. You see, I will navigate to home. Oh, no, did it save it? CSV here, and I've got my CSV file. This, that's what everything was that I, I've um, calculated and I can download it. And I can, then it will be downloaded on my laptop and I can reopen it in Excel or do whatever I want with it. This is the first, the first one we wanted to look at from a, um, accessing via the API. So th this is one study here. What, and as I, I was indicating, we have, uh, we looked at one, one compound and, uh, and we know that that study at uh, over 333, uh, at 333 compound were used. So what can happen when you do, you look at IDR as a whole, as, as we've seen here, IDR has a large amount of data. And as Peter indicated, you can have multiple, compound are written in different way, but there are multiple compound and you want to create in this ocean of data, is there some, some uh, interesting information or interesting um, element I will be, I could investigate and potentially link to it. So I will need to close a few tabs, otherwise I'm getting lost myself here. This is a curve. So hopefully this is, this is another environment so here we have, uh, if you go to the GitHub repository, I should probably type it here for you, idea notebook. So unfortunately that one, we need to, to link it to, it's, it's again the same principle. It's a, it's a way this repository, when you click on it and use it in the, in the binder environment, if, you, if you're interested later on, you, you, I can show you how it works, but you can, turned it to that repository again into a Docker container. All the dependency you will need to connect to IDR will be installed in that environment. And then you can start exploring the data via notebook. The code from notebook can be turned into a, a quick way of showing um, how to access the API. And you can easily turn them into script. Hopefully, okay, obviously I have been, have time out again. So uh, obviously we'll have to show it. Well, actually I can show it from here. So if I click in that repository, I will launch the notebook. So sorry about that, the time, it times out. I have them prepared, but uh, we talk a bit longer. The image is already built. So that should take again, a few seconds. And here we are, we have an environment. We have all the dependency ready for us to, to look at. Here we're looking at Python uh, only. So this is a Python notebook. So this is a Python API to connect to um, IDR. As I indicated earlier on, we have multiple bindings. So don't be faced on saying, oh, I'm an expert in R and I need to learn Python now. It's, you don't have to at all. You, you just, uh, you can pick, uh, the, the language, we do not do too many esoteric lang languages, but uh, I would say that the familiar one that uh, will be in, in, in people doing analysis uh, are, are covered. So in that, uh, in that notebook, I wanted to show, what I wanted to show is the, the importance of, 
of curation of the data across multiple study uh, because uh, Francis, uh, our, the curator here, spent a lot of time and a lot of discussion with the author of wh why should you do that. I, I know what my data look like, but the problem is 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 not what your data look like, but it's what you want other to be doing with those data. And uh, by I was pointing the term of compound name and she key earlier on. If this is not unified across study, then I start to, if, if an image analyst come along, want to explore this data, they cannot do so. If, uh, if this is not unified, they will have to say, okay, for that study is called compound name, for that other studies, it's in written in French or German, or this is not going to scale. So that means that you, the, the ability for you to discover more thing with this image repository is doesn't exist at that stage. So here, if you if you are if you want to run script afterward, this is the same step you will follow. You will you will first import your library. So you create an environment where you are going to I'm I'm going to use virus file. I'm going again to use the the web API. So similar to what we did in R. And here I'm going to look at uh, multiple compounds. So Peter uh, was showing you loretadine earlier on. So again, it was spelled in the UI with capital L, lowercase. And, uh, but loretadine was uh, used in IDR 1994, the one we just looked at. And here I'm, I'm looking at other compounds I'm interested in. So we could, and, and again, you can go along later on, change the compound you're interested in, and find maybe other study. Like here, I'm, I'm putting few a few compound, and here already you can see the the unification, the name for some have not been uh, unified at the time because some other study we all they are older study and they will the unification process take time. So we certainly in some cases need to go back, but you can see already the two different spelling that we have here that we are looking at. Okay, I can, can discuss more in the API. So here I'm using the Mapper API. This is the application that Peter was using to explore the data earlier on. I'm just indicating which key I'm interested in and then I'm going to load the data. So I'm close, this, I've collapsed this, uh, this um, method, but if people interested in code, this is just a way of, uh, of passing the JSON that we will receive. So if you are interested in, you can expand or collapse the, the cell, it's nothing. Uh, you receive a bundle of data, you need to, to get the, the mean, to extract the meaning out of them. Okay, so here again, I'm going to download the data using the the, the the web API, the mapper API, I'm going to, to save them as an Excel file, a CSV file, sorry. Then even if it's done somewhere, I don't know, the, wherever that, that, uh, that Docker container is running, I can download it on my machine after, after the fact, if I don't want, if, if I do want to do further exploration, this is very similar to what we have done. And, when the cell is running, as you see, there's a little star. So this, we're, we're retrieving data from IDR uh, at that stage. Because the queries start to be a bit more complex because we have more compound, this, take, uh, this could take a bit longer than, uh, than the previous one. So it's like anything, the, the data are running. We, we try to, to, here I've, I've launched it from the, the the GitHub repository, so it was launched in the public, my, my binder, there's a public instance that is run by Google. So this is a public uh, instance that you can, where you can run any GitHub repository and that can be converted. There is alongside IDR with our colleague from EBI, we have uh, been working on uh, running our own instance of uh, my binder. So this is much closer to the IDR data, which obviously speed up the, the loading process. But when I relaunch it, I relaunch it on the on the public uh, public version, which explain the the loading time because I have no control where that image is. It could be 
somewhere in France, Germany, or wherever the, the Google is going to run this element. Okay, so hopefully that will be turn. Uh, the star will uh, will give us some re give us some result soon. And here we are exploring similar to what we were doing with the IC50, because in in the in the case of the IC50, we were just loading one table that we were able to see in the web client. Here we are aggregating multiple results. So we are aggre aggregating knowledge from multiple study. And then we, we, we say, okay, we want the compounding, we want the inchi key, we want the concentration, give me the plate image. And then we are going to see what we can do with the concentration that are given to us from this compound. Well, we have to be patient again. So any any questions so far of what to how to use? So obviously this is more if you for all all that you will need to do to do to know a bit of programming or someone who, who can do programming for for you. That's uh, you, this is not a, a just a, a click of a well we click a button at the moment because we have we have built it uh, ahead of time. But as you can see, there is a bit of code. Uh, to, to do that. So we have now a good number of examples of how to access the, the API. So that if I look at the various notebook, you will see there are multiple of one, uh, multiple ones. So some, like we have another one called gene to phenotype where you can go from gene and find the phenotype associated. So there are multiple example of how to access the data and sometimes the images or sometimes just uh, the JSON. Hopefully this will be finished, not, not yet, oh, okay. Uh, unless my machine is suffering a bit. And when we have, the, okay, well, I, when I'm, I'm going to go through the other cell when I'm, I'm not going to click on them, but just waiting while this is loading. And when we have the file, you can convert them into, in that case, for people that are doing Python, uh, data frame, uh, Panda data frame in the context of R, we were using R data frame. So this is just a convenient way of accessing all those, those big, uh, big amount of data. Here we go, we're done now. So if I run, I read the CSV and I'm going to sort them by more concentration. And we, you can see there's the compound and again, as we were indicating uh, for the, the the previous notebook, we are able to have the inf the, the concentration, but importantly, we're able to, we're also linked to the image. So everything is linked. So the effort, the initial effort by the author of, of putting the, the image, having the link between all the metadata linked to that image, it's it's paying off after the fact, because I come along and I want to, to know, okay, how this, how those compound are used across multiple study and what is the concentration that is used, I can do so immediately. So this is coming already from six different study. So we started from with compound use in one study, which was IDR 94 from one study. And actually those compound, uh, there are six study in, in IDR that are using the, the four compound I'm selected which is already very, very interesting. So now I can, I can start plotting my result. In, in that case, we were looking at, we have multiple compound, how the concentration has been used. So you, you can see that in, in this graph. So there's a, the type of concentration used is very similar, okay? But there, there are some unknown and the, the fact that the data have not been curated down the line when somebody come along want to do further investigation I, I will have to discard some of those images and it's it's kind of a, a shame because you part of your part of the investigation cannot be taken into account by somebody else for doing further um, in, uh, further discovery as was that was mentioned earlier on today and here uh, will I don't know if some of you have assisted uh, um, looked at Will's workshop, but when you have all those data from IDR, 
even if IDR doesn't run Omero figure, you can then build, you can still build your figure from using the figure AP, uh, figure API. At the moment, there's, there's a lack of, um, we, we need to add more method to it. That's certainly true, but you can generate programmatically figure. So if you're interested in the code, we can do that. I can show you, but this is the interesting bit here by having all the images linked all the concentration and having all that information here, we have all in cheeky concentration, everything is linked to the image. I can now doing from by doing my investigation, I'm able to generate a figure, save it as a, a JSON file. So I, I can I can create a JSON file here that I can go file open. And you should we should have a figure the JSON here. And then I can download it. Uh, did I click download? No, okay. Download, okay. So if I go to now to the workshop um, server, so we aim to have a T21, to a figure installed to IDR. I'm now, I should be able, if I open figure, Uh, click uh, file import from JSON. So I need to open that file. Okay. Download. Sorry. So I need to open the. It's we we discussed that with Will. We need to make it more having the ability to pick up a JSON file uh, from Figure, but I should be able to actually paste that and, and voila. So here we have data from IDR and I programmatically extracted the knowledge and generated the figure that I can now see in a different server. So I've, I'm here on the work, our workshop server. We have, we have extracted, all those images are coming from IDR. We have Everything is linked. So th that's what's Loretta did in the, at 20 concentration. So we have the, the graph here. Uh, if I'm, we looked at various concentration, 20 micromolar, 0, 0, 64, et cetera. We, we can calculate the mean concentration for all the, the, for that compound across multiple study. And then we can, we can plot some images everything is coming from in that case from idea and I can generate a figure um, from idea with uh, doing my cross investigation so I could add more to the figure obviously which which screen they're coming from etc but th this this is just to give you an example of what can be done from an API perspective so that's what I all I wanted to show you today hopefully you you will see that uh, there's some benefit the thing that you can do in the UI, but if you're coming from a different angle, you can do quite a lot of things uh, against IDR data using the various API. As I said, there are other API that here we have looked at the Python API and uh, using the web, the, the Python, the web API in the context of Python and R. But if you're interested in other language and how to set it up in other language, yeah, all the languages like Java are, I can show you that in uh, later on. Uh, thank you. I think that's that's it for for now. And stop sharing. And uh, if you have any any question. Because I think we have uh, two few more minutes. If. Uh, So yeah, the the in in a lot of the the code at times because that's what came up a few times is okay. You show me in the in an environment like my binder. This is great. Now I want to run it locally. If you look at the GitHub repository, the the, the way it works, it will if you if uh, some of you are familiar with installation of packages, we'll mainly use Conda or or pip to install and then you could create exactly the same environment locally either using notebook 
or not using notebook you can and then you can run script most of our of our repository except the idr one have a notebook and the corresponding script if you have let's say a python notebook you will have the python script so you can take the script run it and in the same kind of environment either using docker or creating a, a conda environment on your machine running the script or, or wherever you need to install it so you know which dependency they are um, th that are needed in order to run the software if you if you're interested in that i can show you more uh, of that later on so i think the the message from a idr perspective of uh, the an analysis side what we try to what we would like to see is from as i was indicating when people submit paper and they say I analyze I don't know, with this fiji plugin or this python script or this r library having the ability to offer to anybody who wanted to investigate the data a small environment where they i'm not just going they're not going to reproduce the entire uh it's it's impossible to do the the entire uh, study but just explore some of the data or even on a couple of images to validate what they were um, saying idr also can be used and if you're interested in that i can show you of a, of a mechanism to compare new algorithm against existing data and for people the ngff was mentioned before we have already example of that so fetching some idea some data from idr and the binary from the ngff format or mizar so and then you can uh, you can actually explore data in a much quicker manner because that, that's allowed you to do things in parallel and loading the loading of the retrieving of the data is much quicker so i can if you're interested uh, i can i can show you that i think that's it for me i th 